You know, what I really love about uh, the works of uh, uh, Mr. Sanso is the great uh, reverential love for, for nature. His use of color and tone distinguishes him from other artists. He is able to create atmosphere and mood in his landscapes. It's nature really that impels him to do this, um, you know, fantastic uh, imaginary landscapes actually. Sanso's avid reading in literature and philosophy becomes obvious whenever I converse with him lengthily. He claims, and I like to think his claim valid, that his background in world literature and philosophy deepens and infuses larger meaning into his paintings. Before the war, it was a picnicking ground. We loved the place, and it was really at that period just pure waters. We could almost drink from the, from the you know, we used to swim, and uh, lovely, just beautiful, beautiful days. So later on, it was a place of uh, getting away from the war as much as we could. And what can I say more about that fact that uh, the landscapes, the rocks were, also I found out uh, many years after the Montalban, that there was an older uh, reason for loving rocks. Is uh, friends of ours uh, who, were in, uh, who lived in France, uh, friends of ours in Spain when I was a baby, um, there was a civil war in Spain, so they were, went as refugees to France and stayed on. Well, in any case, they had pictures of us, of all, the whole group, and we were in, in a river just like Montalban. I mean, white rocks and everything like Montalban, except the vegetation, of course, which is uh, not tropical. So I have a picture, very blurry, of um, father, mother, sister, and myself sitting on rocks, standing on rocks, and people all over the place, friends. Okay. So there was something already in the subconscious, if we may, or uh, an, an imprint of all these things that come and waken up, uh, and awaken, and well, they start there from that spark, and it goes on. Later on, you recognized yourself without knowing it. Montalban was a place, as later on, it was in Brittany. Brittany was very significant because of a very lasting, wonderful friendship besides. So for about 23, 24 years, I went every summer to the house of Yves Le Dantec, of whom I must speak because he's a pillar in my background, knowing French, because one of the things I asked him, don't think I'm charming that I make mistakes. I don't want to make mistakes. I said, you, uh, please, just be kind enough to call me each and every time I make a mistake. In the middle of a conversation, say, no this, yes, 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 no, 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 no. So he did it for years and years. And well, my French became more or less uh, the level of my English. So that took some doing, huh? because I said, <laughs> French was my sixth language. So we used to go even the boulevard, or I paint, we painted everything around. The burnt out Hialeah, we went to uh, San Beda in Intramuros, and the walls. Oh, the cathedral, uh, we did a lot of these things. Manila, burnt out. We tried to get, find beauty and all that, but <laughs> it was what it was. So then Diliman was a different sort of thing because you had the plain of uh, Marikina and uh, well, we did a lot of uh, views there. Tagaytay, we did some Tagaytay bits also and uh, what else? We tried Baguio, watercolors in Baguio. Uh, 
with Harry, with uh, Janssen, with uh, uh, Gat, the uh, cartoonist, and uh, well, we're four. Janssen, ah, and Malang. See, the seascapes came with Brittany. Yeah. Because we don't have what uh, Brittany has, is the tides may vary, I mean, from the lowest to the highest tide, something like 12 meters. Can you imagine what it is, 12 meters? Huh? So you're standing here, terra firma, and it happened to me at least once, is then I forgot. So I was painting what I was seeing, this and that, and all of a sudden I was on an island. Well, uh, this is a perfect example of my mixture of what later became, of course, with the basis I had of Brittany and much of it that uh, then I mixed it with Matabunkai and I started mixing up things else. Well, in any case, this could be the Batangas uh, area, very easily they see in the rocks too. And, but also those who know Brittany see Brittany and those who know the Philippines see the Philippines. And I see both at the same time. So then you have here uh, studies of waves, the wave patterns, because as I said a while ago, is you may be standing here thinking you are on uh, solid earth, and all of a sudden the sea goes up so high that you may be just absolutely uh, close to floating. So you have these studies of waves, which of course uh, you could easily convert it into plants if you wish. That is why many of my paintings are started uh, you know, an abstract way, because what I'm doing is finding my rhythms, my spaces, my composition, then the subject matter comes after, generally. Sometimes I do intend to do a place, but generally now I've done it enough for me to just let go and just really explode myself uh, painting it and having a grand time with it. So uh, here's an example of in this case, the balance tips over to the Filipino. Uh, <laughs> because you have all these uh, uh, baklad things, and uh, oh, the Britain, Breton side is, uh, the, the Bretons would say, yeah, what, where do we have this on the coast? Uh, and for the Filipino, it's immediately uh, bamboos, and uh, oh, you can have it in Laguna, Laguna de Bay, and uh, definitely. So it's all this, uh, of course, it, it's difficult to put a cent very centralized thing it is because, but I hope uh, my intentions were to do it and yet not fall uh, prey of this centrality. So I hope I did it right. Anyway, you have these, fa uh, what do you call these, big rhythms like this, and then to show the uh, receding planes. Then the, oh, here are their big bulky ones. Then as they go, they become slower, lower rhythms as you go farther away, farther away until you almost don't, it's, you cannot perceive, you cannot feel the, the horizon. It's so uh, intermixed with uh, the sky. And then, uh, no. This is about, you can say the same thing, these very strong uh, rhythms here. Uh, and then as you go along, then you slow down with, uh, that's something important in, in any, any composition, is your rhythms. Here in Mega Mall, before it opened, or when it opened, Mr. Hansi asked me to organize a show for for Senso, and it was put in a, we had a show in one of the units in Building B, second floor, but it was so successful, and that started the art walk, because it was so successful, so they invited the galleries to come in here.
Asenso has a big demand. So um, he's, uh, in, in terms of the market, like uh, he's a blue chip. So um, I, I would recommend that, uh, you know, if you're a starting collector or an old collector, to buy Asenso for the simple reason that he is bankable and, 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 and good, no? and good. Well, the simplicity, the masterful strokes, and of course the colors, no? people get attracted to his colors. Um, well, you could see the mastery, the simplicity, uh, the poetry dun sa, sa strokes. I would like the, to carry the, the fast moving, meaning the, you know, the corals, the flowers, um, because those are the easy to move or the easy to understand and so. But if you will uh, look back, uh, uh, during the 50s and 60s, which is the height of uh, Sanso's, uh, well, that was his prime, when he was still a student, and uh, the, the, the figurative is the, are, are the rare Sanso's. Those are the collectible, from the point of view of a collector. Well, in terms of uh, business, no, he's very professional when it comes to dealing with, with galleries. So that's the thing that I admired with Sanso. When I entered uh, the houses of uh, old collectors, especially the, 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 the collectors of before, not, not the new wave collectors now, no? Uh, it is the figurative of Sanso, which he is not doing it, uh, uh, well, unfortunately, not, not anymore, no? As an artist, he's tireless, he's very determined, you know, he's very serious about his, his art and he's very consistent. You know, kahit na, there's a lot of Sanso works, I mean, really a lot, because you know, he, he non-stop painting child, but each one is good. I mean, very, very consistent. If he was a Filipino citizen, or uh, he would uh, have been a national artist now, or, or proclaimed national artist, because he, he is uh, sincere in, in, his, uh, in his work. Once upon a time, the Sansos owned a large piece of property uh, in Makati and they had a whole block that they were trying to sell. And at that moment, the Philippine Daily Inquirer was looking for a property. And when I saw this, I thought this might be perfect for the Inquirer. So we bought the land from Sanso Pedret's family, and uh, that is where the Philippine Daily Inquirer is sitting on now. So when I bought the property for the Inquirer, I said, I need a souvenir about Sanso. So I saw that he was selling some paintings, and I saw this particular one, and I loved it, and I said, okay, we will, I'll buy this. Oh, I have the greatest admiration for him because I think of him not just a Filipino artist or an artist from the Philippines, but he's really an international artist. And I think I appreciated that when I lived in Europe and I saw how he, he is um, recognized by the top museums in France, in Spain, and even his vision and his way of looking at things is not parochial at all, but very international. Um, I buy my painting by gut feeling. When I look at a painting, I know I like it and then I'll buy it, no matter what style it is. And the style of Sansoyo appeals to me. In one of my visits to Luz Gallery, uh, that time Luz Gallery was in EDSA. Okay. 
uh, while I was looking at the drawers, I saw this particular painting. I didn't even know it was a Sanso. And it was a great painting. Uh, it was a seascape, and you can see that the, the waves, the rush of waters, you can see it rushing against the big rocks. And I could feel it, and I was really in love with it. And then I saw it was a Sanso. And the price was right. It was 900. This was in 1980 or 81. And wow, it fits my pocket. So I immediately purchased it. Uh, I think uh, months after when I acquired a book on Sanso by Ding Roses, I saw that it was occupying one page. In the same way that we have dual citizenship, I suppose uh, he uh, can honestly be considered both a Filipino artist as well as an international artist. He's been exhibited all over the world, which is uh, excellent. What do I like about it? Well, you know, all his paintings, there's always a moon, so that you see a moon there. And also, uh, but what I like most are these uh, clouds of foliage that he has. It's very interesting and uh, not many people seem to know how to do it and he does it so well. That's why I like this painting. What attracted me are the colors also and the strokes, different kind of strokes. And up till this day, see I got this painting, I never sold it. I, up to this day, I am, I am keeping it, and it's, in, it's one of my precious jewels. I'm looking forward to owning an, uh, another Sanso, which is different from this, because I've been seeing a lot of um, series that's different from this also. So I will be looking for an opportunity to buy another one. I mean, his works uh, won't fall apart. Uh unlike uh, quite possibly some others who are less of craftsmen, his uh, imagination, which is uh, born out of uh, his international uh, exposure, his uh, willingness to uh, learn and uh, to strike out in new directions. These are, uh, I think, uh, things that artists can learn from uh, Sanso.